Hello everyone, welcome to Onion Skin, continuing on with the drawing in Toon Boom videos. Today, having a closer look at the color palette over here. How does this thing work? Over the last few videos, we've been putting together this guy. I call him the Domestic Killbot. Uh, tracing it over this drawing here, um, in order to do so, I'd use a whole bunch of variety of uh, bright colors that are easy to see. Uh, then black, uh, but now I want them to be black. So this is the first thing that we're going to do. Grab the black arrow here, we can select the whole lot. And as we choose different colors in the palette, it will change to what we choose. There we go, so that is... Now right off the bat in the color palette, you have all of these color swatches just here. And I don't think I really need to explain too much about how they work. You choose a color, you grab the paint bucket over here and drop stuff down, and yep, it fills in color. Great. Uh, but how do we make our own colors? Because although there's a lot here, it may not have necessarily what you want. Now this is what these three buttons do. So if you grab any old color and hit the plus button a few times, we see we get new, one through seven, uh, and it will make a copy of whatever you had selected before. So choose that one there, get the plus, then we get a new kind of light brownie brown. Uh, so I'm gonna choose this new one here, double click on that. It brings up a color picker, which looks differently depending on if you're using a PC or a Mac. It's not at all about, you can see it changes live down there to whatever color we want. Um, let's say something like that. And can drop in a few colors like so. Now the other thing it does is the colors you choose are not permanent. So if you animate across a whole scene, lots of different frames, um, use this watch with lots of different characters as well, if you double click and open it again and choose something else, notice that it will update live just like that. This is really super handy because it means, uh, yeah, exactly what I said. If this is animated across a whole series of frames, it's gonna update all of it at the same time. So what you can do with this is create a full color palette per character. So they have a complete set of different shades, different bits of their clothing and skin, etc., etc., And you can keep that palette saved, you can export it. So if you go up here, you can go to palette, new palette, and go down again, go to rename palette. I can call that kill, but there we go. And all these new colors appear. Well, all these new colors, one blink one, call default. What else you can do, because I've got this reference material here, say you do have a photo or scenery or some kind of imported reference. You can take sample colors from that as well. Double click to bring up the color picker again. And sorry, you're on your own if you're on a PC, but on a Mac it is down here. And click on the color, there we go. So now I can, well, <laughs> dab his shirt in. All right. Oops. <laughs> so you can see what happened then, I got ambitious. I went on to the next color already, but you gotta choose the next color first. We're gonna cover the paint bucket more in depth in another video. However, I do wanna cover some uh, bugs. This is my least favorite thing in Toon Boom Studio. It likes to do this. Uh, close gaps in a less than desirable manner. Sometimes it is useful because you can draw two lines that don't quite touch each other, but it will you know, still kind of close that gap in. A lot of the time it just makes it up and it makes very little sense as well. The solution is not exactly elegant, but it does work. That's simply I'm trying to, I'm kind of hoping it breaks on me on purpose just so I can show it off. But it's working really well. So, say like that little corner there, you have to zoom all the way in. Sometimes it breaks to the point though where like just half of this will fill or it just won't fill at all. Like you just kind of keep ramming and nothing fills. If you zoom all the way out, it might work. If you zoom all the way in, it might work. No idea why, but eh, it gets around a pretty silly problem. And I suppose as far as problems could exist, they could be worse. So 
You can see I'm just flipping back and forth between the colors to choose what I want for any given scenario and when I need a new color. I pop down to one of the new ones I made and grab a color picker and grab it. That's not what I wanted. I wanted the dark map. All of these. All right. Other small problems. You can see it got ambitious and it's filled in this gap too. Didn't want it to do that. Underneath the paint bucket tools, there's another one called unpaint, and that will get rid of bits like that. Some other gaps may seem to appear that really aren't worth worrying about. I don't know if you can see here around the tie, there's a few white pixels. There's some up there as well. But if I zoom all the way in, they're not really a problem. This is another strange bug. I'm not really sure why it's there. I assume it's just because the visuals are deliberately compressed to make the program faster and less likely to crash. Uh, but sometimes it will bug out to the point where it looks like a whole region hasn't been filled. And when you zoom all the way in, suddenly, uh, yep, it's there. And when you render it, it's there. Uh, so I guess keep an eye out for it. Something strange might happen, but try not to worry too much. As long as it's working, you're all good. Okay, so here's all filled in and looking fine. Uh, so what else can the palette do here? Well, when, we've seen that when you double click on the swatch itself, it brings up the color picker. When you double click on the name, uh, you can rename it. Uh, so let this be arms. I'll call the light brown trimmings. What was that? Cables. Spikes. Eyes. That one is shirt. What was the last one? Did that even get used? Alright. <laughs> Tie. So you can see the great advantage to being able to name your swatches is that they're not necessarily just called, you know, blue, red, green. They're literally named after the pieces of the character. Skin, hair, clothes. And when you group all that together in its palette here, that can be exported and it can be shared around to other uh, project files if this character gets used again if it's a larger project and it appears in several different Tomb Boom files, or if you're getting other people to help you out. It's very easy to share pieces across to other people so that everyone will use exactly the same colors. So underneath this drop down menu again, under palette, there's export palette. And that will, yeah, just export it to somewhere on your system and you can send it, email it, import it again, treat it like anything else. The last thing I want to talk about in this video, which we might go into more depth one day is Styles. Styles are a kind of tint to a palette set. Uh, so for example, if you have a character that's out at nighttime, you want all of his colors to be a little bit more blue. So for Moonlight, um, it's a very handy tool that allows you to switch between different palettes at uh, the press of a button. Uh, so to demonstrate how that works, you can see we've got this character here. We've got all of his swatches there. And under Style, go to Duplicate Style. It creates a new one. And from there, open it up again and go to Tint Offset. We get an RGB setting here, it's red, green, blue. And I pull a bit up on the blue one and oh, you can see what's happening there. So every single uh, swatch is now getting influenced by these colors happening here. So that's looking pretty good, I'll hit OK. And you can notice that every swatch in the set has been affected by it uh, quite permanently. Uh, which could be a problem if we hadn't done a duplicate. So if I pull down here and go to default, there you go, I can switch back to the original. So depending on the scene of the video, I can now very easily switch the character out with different palette styles depending on where he is. So that's a pretty brief introduction to both the palette and the paint bucket. We'll go into 
both of them in a bit more depth one day. Uh, but that should be enough to get you started. If you're feeling uncomfy with anything, please leave a comment. I'll be happy to help you out. Bye-bye.